Good morning. This is the OHSU Effect Inside Health and Science at OHSU. I'm Lacey Evans. In just a few weeks, the world will mark World AIDS Day, December 1st. But up at OHSU, they don't take just one day to discuss the virus. Researchers have dedicated their lives to it. With me now on KXL is Dr. Lewis Picker, the Associate Director of the Vaccine and and Gene Therapy Institute, who is attempting to develop a vaccine for AIDS. Good morning. Good morning. So over the summer, we reached the 30th anniversary of the first AIDS case. How far have we come uh, from then? Well, uh, quite far, actually, although we we still have a ways to go. Um, Back in those days, a diagnosis of AIDS was a death sentence. And uh, in the ensuing years, uh, a whole plethora of antiviral drugs have been developed, such that for people in the developed world, it can basically convert to a chronic disease and they could live almost normal lifespans. Um, that's a huge advance considering the, uh, you know, the mortality of this disease in the, in the 80s and 90s. Your work has been described as the ultimate weapon against AIDS. Tell us about the vaccine that's going on, that's being, uh, you know, born in your laboratory. Well, you know, as good as the drugs work, um, they're expensive. They have to be taken for life, and and it would be much better to be able to prevent the disease altogether with a vaccine. And so we have uh, we have dedicated uh, the last uh, ten to fifteen years to this to this work, and have come up with a new approach that that um, ha- has shown uh, very promising results in uh, non-human primate studies, uh, preclinical studies. Yeah, tell us a little more about that. Well, the, the idea, uh, the AIDS virus is a very difficult virus for the immune response to catch up to. It, it has the ability to sort of run away by evolving very quickly because it replicates very fast. So that's why it's never controlled by the immune system if you get it naturally, and that's why most vaccines don't work. Um, we found that, in, um, and have proven in fact, that in order to, to stop the, the AIDS virus, in this case the monkey version of the AIDS virus, you have to have the, uh, the equivalent of of the immunologic army prepared at all times to to intercept the virus when it first gets in the body. You, you can't have a delay for for uh, the forces, so to speak, to build up. It has to be there uh, right from the get-go. And so we've developed a vaccine that does that, 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 uh, that has the, is able to uh, maintain the equivalent of armed soldiers at the portals of entry of the virus and intercept it very early. And we've shown that when, if you do that, you can stop it. How similar is the monkey version as opposed as compared to the human version? Well, actually, very similar. The uh, human version actually came from monkeys. It came from uh, African non-human primates. Uh, and, uh, you know, m- monkeys originally they went, they went through the ch- chimpanzee before it came to humans. So, uh, what we study is a, is a is a is another virus that came from African monkeys. But we study an Asian macaque. So, like humans, they they're not naturally infected with it and they have the same exact disease that the humans get from the AIDS virus, they get from the SIV virus. And so it's a very, very similar disease. It's one of the best animal models out there. And um, it's very hard for a vaccine to control uh, uh, SIV, uh, just like it, 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 it's turned out to be for HIV. Well, this all sounds very promising, but I imagine there is a lot more work that needs to be done. Yes, I mean we we've we have proof proof what's called proof of concept, which means that our concept of having the what I call the activated soldiers there at the at the beginning does work, um, and and in the monkey system, and that's very promising. However, in order to put something uh, any vaccine into humans, you have to go through a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of safety concerns. You have to check off a lot of boxes, and you have to hope that w- what you do actually translates um, from the monkey to the human and. And that's uh, our primary focus now, and it's going to take a number of years to, to take our, our, our monkey concept and turn it into a, a real human vaccine that could go forward for regulatory approval, clinical testing, and hopefully, if it works, uh, ultimately uh, approval. Yeah, that was one of my questions, that how close are we to human trials? Well, human trials, you know, have different grades. There's, there's the early trial, so-called phase one, and then it builds up to phase two and phase three. Uh, early trials are, are just sort of, you, you test the safety, you t- get a general readout of whether it's working at all in humans, and that's a very small uh, number of people, you know, let's say a, a dozen or two dozen. Uh, in order to show that it works, you have to go into uh, trials that are actually numbered in the thousands of people. That Those are a ways off. We're hoping that the initial stage trials are going to be about two or three years hence. You know, we are, have successfully developed so many vaccines. Why has an AIDS vaccine been such a challenge? 
Well, AIDS is, uh, and it's taken a couple of decades to actually realize this, AIDS, AIDS, the AIDS virus is very different from the other viruses that we normally encounter, you know, flu or measles, in that it's evolved to uh, evade completely the immune system. And uh, whereas the other viruses can be controlled by immune responses, in fact, we, we knew that because if you, once you get measles, you never got it again. So once you get the measles vaccine, you're, not, you, you know, you're protected. Um, it, it, anybody who knows anything about the AIDS virus knows that is that you never get rid of it, and it, and it, and it's, it leads you know, untreated to inexorably to death. So, uh, and that's because it is evades the immune system. So it's taken this long to figure out whether it has immune vul- vulnerabilities, to define those vulnerabilities, and then to be to develop a vaccine that could could exploit those vulnerabilities. So, you know, like I mentioned, the the vulnerability we exploit is that once the virus when it first gets into the vi- to the body, it uh, before it spreads and systemically and, and you know makes this huge overwhelming mass of viral replication, it's vulnerable, and that's where we we've developed our vaccine to hit it. You kind of mentioned this in the beginning of our interview, but is it more realistic to control the disease with with meds as opposed to preventing it? Well, it's easier, obviously, since we're doing that right now. Um, you know the the molecular virologists and biochemists have made huge strides in, in, in again, finding what the vulnerabilities of the viral uh, machinery, so to speak, and, find, and developing drugs that, it, that, that specifically target those vulnerabilities and can stop replication. But, but they can't get rid of the virus. They can just sort of control it. And so if people go off the drugs, the virus will come right back. Uh, it is harder to prevent it. Um, we're, we're trying to get nature to do something, and we're trying to get uh, a vaccine to do something that nature has been unable to do. So we're 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 trying to do better than nature, and um, and there's a number of areas now where we're beginning to show some, some promise. Uh, you know, both in the vaccine that we've developed as well as some others. And I think ultimately the the vaccine that will ultimately go forward will be one that combines the best features of all of those. Uh, ideas that are going forward now and into one vaccine that that will that will hopefully work most of the time with with, with AIDS virus it's 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 going to be hard to get the kind of efficacy we see with let's say measles um, but we're going to work towards it and and hopefully what we come up with will be able to uh, uh, really put the uh, uh, take care of the epidemic especially in the developing world where it's wreaking such havoc how did you become interested in AIDS research well, I hate to admit it, but I'm a um, 30 year anniversary uh, goes back to when I was in medical school, and I was in medical school in San Francisco, uh, University of California, San Francisco, and uh, the onset of AIDS was a very big deal. Um, you know, it uh, it really hit San Francisco hard, as you might imagine, and um, and both as my clinical training and for the world I lived in was was uh, was markedly changed uh, by the on by the onset of uh, the AIDS virus into, uh, into our consciousness and into uh, um, our society. Uh, it's, so it's been a major influence on me, both medically and, and personally. And um, I didn't initially start working on it, but in the early 1990s, when my research interests began to uh, sh- you know, have some uh, linkage stage where I thought I could do some good, I, I moved into it and, and progressively moved to full time. And I came to OHSU and uh, 2000, uh, really just for that reason, to develop an AIDS vaccine. Where can people get more information on your research, on the vaccine, and, and maybe in the, for future trials if they're interested in that? Where's the best resource? Uh, I would probably just follow the OHSU website. Uh, um, and uh, usually our, our advances are kept up to date there. And obviously there's the scientific literature for those who are, inter- who are interested in reading at that level. That's great. Well, Dr. Lewis Picker, we really appreciate you being with us on the OHSU Effect. Thank you. Thank you. It's Dr. Lewis Picker, the Associate Director of the Vaccine and Gene Therapy Institute. And don't forget, we offer the OHSU Effect as podcasts on our website, kxl.com, also at ohsueffect.org. Also, if there is a health topic you'd like us to cover, send me an email at lacey.evans at kxl.com or follow me on Twitter at Lacey Evans. Send me your suggestions. More of the OHSU Effect coming up in five minutes on FM News 101 KXL.